Mr. starts the recording is there. Any questions or comments, etc., from colleagues? No? OK. Mrs. McLeod, can you please start the recording? Yes, Chair, it was started and the live stream has also started. Thank you. OK, thank you very much. Please note that this is a fully virtual meeting with members and officers attending fully virtually. The public section of this meeting will be recorded and published online for viewing after the meeting. Please note, as I said, that this, this is a virtual and remote meeting. Can members activate their cameras when possible and can all attendees mute their microphones when not speaking? Please note, uh, sorry, please do not come in during, in during items unless I invite you to do so. Can I confirm that all members have been able to access the presentations uploaded in the calendar invite for the meeting? Yes. Thank you. As we have now been operating remotely for quite a while, and the committee members should now be used to this type of proceedings, I will not remind you of the technical operations, but don't hesitate to contact me or an officer, should there be any questions. As usual, <clears throat> If any members lose a connection or have technical issues during the meeting, please alert the, alert the committee officer by your separate Teams chat uh, message, if possible, and support will be available from an ICT officer, whom I am told is David Mayer for today. I will also attempt to schedule breaks as per past meetings. Item one, sederant declarations of interest. Mrs. McLeod, can I ask you to take the sederant by means of a roll call? And for the benefit of, viewer, of viewers, can you please also remind us the officers' names will help us today? Thank you. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, if I can just alert you that um, there is a technical issue with the live stream. Currently, officers are trying to sort it out, um, but I am recording the meeting and um, this first part of the meeting, I, you know, we can upload after the meeting um, so, in the absence of, of the live stream, but hopefully that will be sorted out in the Thank you, Mrs. McLeod. So we can, we, can, okay. we can continue the meeting. Uh, yes. Okay, yes. fine. Th so thank can you. you proceed with the set around, please? Of course, yeah. So uh, I'll just run through the uh, members' names. Councillor Lonche. Present. Councillor Goodall. Here. Councillor Simpson. Present. Thank you. Um, we have apologies from Councillors Stuart Adams and Councillor Victor today. Um, Councillor Davidson uh, gives her apologies for the first item and um, she will join after um, the first item has been heard. Um, so we'll let her know when item one has been concluded. Okay. And in addition, um, we have um, legal advisor, um, legal advisor to the planning uh, to the local review body, Amanda De Candia, in uh, attendance. Also, Bruce Strachan, planning advisor, who will present um, LRB six one one, six one three, and six one five. And we have Marie Higgins, planning officer, who will present LRB six one two. Um, and committee officer for today is Alison McLeod, myself. Thank, Thank you. you. As members cannot attend an item being reviewed in their ward and should therefore withdraw for that particular item, is there any declaration of interest from present members? If this is the case, can you please raise your hand and provide item number, nature of the declaration, and whether you will leave the meeting if necessary, then Mrs. McLeod will remove these members from the meeting for the duration of that item. Members should remain out with the meeting until invited to return. Keeping in mind what I just said, I have an interest to declare for case number LRB 613 concerning my ward, i.e. Ward 12, so I will leave the meeting and will leave the committee uh, in the vice chair's care. Any other interest to declare? I don't see anything. At this point, I know I have to let the committee know that for technical reasons, case LRB 614 will not be heard today and will be deferred to a future meeting. 
item two, public sector equality duty. This committee is required to agree to give due regard to these duties under the Equality Act. Act, sorry. <clears throat> Members should therefore acknowledge the public sector equality duty when considering each of the reviews before them today. If this is not the case, and if you do not agree, then please indicate using the hands up function and le legal advice will be sought for the member concerned. I do not see any indication. Item three, minute of RB meeting of 24th of May 2024. We have before us the draft minute of the local review body meeting of 24th of May for approval. Can you therefore confirm that this is an accurate record and approve the minute? If this is not the case, please indicate using the, uh, the end ups function. You do not see any indication, so the minute is approved. Item four, spreadsheet highlighting relevant policies for each review. Members, can you please note the list of policies which should be considered for each review as compiled in the sheet, uh, spreadsheet provided? <clears throat> yes. Right. Uh, so can you please uh, note the list of policies? Uh, have you had access to the spreadsheet? Thank you. Please note that we don't have any outstanding business and there is also no past uh, case to consider. So new reviews, item five, LRB 611, notice of review against refusal, a full planning permission for alterations and extension to garage, retrospective, at 117 Nest Circle, Ellen, AB419BU, reference APP slash 2023 slash 2177. Committee, the planning advising officer for this item is Mr. Bruce Strachan, who will present this report. Mrs. McLeod, before Mr. Strachan proceeds, and for the minute of the item, can you please remind us whose members will take part in this case? Uh, yes, Chair, the following members will take part Councillor Launchay, Councillor Goodall, and Councillor Simpson. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Strachan, Mr. Strachan can you please know? present the notice of review and the slides. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Chair. Hopefully you, you can see the slides I'm presenting. Yes, thank you. OK, great. And um, this review is against the refusal of full planning permission for the erection of a garage, a, a, retros a retrospective application at 117 Nest Circle in Ellen. The applicant has indicated that a site inspection would be beneficial in this case. The application site is identified on the slide within an established residential area of Ellen. Um, I'll just put the pointer on um, here as indicated by the uh, red boundary. Um, it's a semi-detached property with its neighbour uh, number 119 to the immediate east and the rear garden backs on to a public footpath um, linking Rannoch Road with Ness Circle. Uh, the refuse site plan shows the footprint of the dwelling house uh, here <clears throat> with uh, the detached garage at the end of the driveway, which is here, um, uh, which is along the boundary shared with number uh, 115, which lies, like I say, to the, to the west. And the garage of number 115 sits forward um, of the uh, garage in this application site, meaning that the proposed garage um, phone forms the main boundary along the length of most of their garden ground, this area here. Uh, slide four shows the garage uh, which was previously on site. It was a fairly standard uh, scale building with a monopitch roof behind a low parapet wall. Uh, the highest part of the garage uh, that was previously on site was 3.05 metres um, along that shared boundary with number 115. Uh, the proposed and largely complete garage is shown here. Helpfully, the dimensions of the former garage are included uh, as dotted lines. You can just um, sort of make them out here uh, and uh, also in, in this elevation and the height. Um, so um, as can be seen, the garage has been widened and increased in height. 
It still has a very shallow monopitch roof and a new height of 4.175 to the eaves along the boundary with that neighbouring property. Uh, the refused elevations show the new garage in the context of the applicant's dwelling house. Uh, so this is the garage here, uh, this is the applicant's house and the eaves height of, of the, the, um, the property. Um, where are we? Uh, it's worth noting the indication of the neighbour's garage, which is this dotted line here. Um, apologies, just lost my space. Uh, neighbour's garage for comparison purposes. And in order to try and provide some clarity on all these dimensions, I, I've put these in on this slide here. So the garage applied for, as I say, is just around 4.17 metres along the boundary. The garage previously was 3.05 metres along the boundary and the neighbouring garage uh, sits at approximately 2.1 metres. Um, this is the refused floor plan of the new garage. The dotted line indicates the previous width of the building. Uh, the building is, however, the same length. This is an aerial view of the site and the immediate area. So number 117, um, is indicated with their garden extending to the public footpath at the rear. Uh, number 115 lies to the west of the site with their garden enclosed by the garage and the trees in this area of public open space uh, to the north. This image uh, from Street View was taken in 2022 and shows uh, the garage that was previously on site with the white door, uh, and that's prior to any work starting. A recent image shows the new garage in the background um, with the height already increased, but it is not rendered in this uh, image, but hence why the works are, are called largely retrospective. Uh, from within the site, a clearer view of the building and the relationship with the applicant's house and the neighbouring garage can be seen. Uh, so the new garage, the neighbour's house and the, the neighbour's garage. Um, in the rear garden, the side elevation and the extent of the remaining garden ground can be seen. And um, there are no concerns about a lack of remaining garden ground. That, that's not a concern. Uh, from the rear of the garden looking back towards the house, it can be seen uh, that the eaves of the garage are considerably um, above those of the dwelling house. And with slide 14, looking more closely at the new building, you can just make out the scale of the former garage um, here, which uh, has been used with the new garage built uh, on top. And you can also see the boundary wall um, which forms the boundary with number 115. From the public footpath, the garage can be seen above boundary fences. Uh, obviously, th this is not the finished colour, which is proposed to be finished in a uh, beige rough cast. Uh, it's not possible to gain access to the garden of number 115, but this is the view from the public area at the end of Rannoch Road. Uh, so this is number 115 here, and uh, you can make out the... Um, the, the heightened wall of the uh, the garage. And then um, for the benefit of the LRB, I took an image over the garden wall where the height uh, can clearly be seen. Um, it's not entirely clear if the timber structure is being erected or demolished here, but it appears to be uh, quite new and under construction, which is attached to the, the boundary wall. A single representation was received stating a fairly neutral position, but expressing concern about a reduction in sunlight to the the, um, the objector's property, which is at number uh, 121, and the view that the building was not conducive uh, to a residential housing estate. In terms of consultations, Rhodes had no comment to make on the application. Within the report of handling, uh, the planning service uh, states that the principle of ancillary development is generally acceptable, subject to specific criteria, that policy requires proposals to be of good design, to integrate with its surroundings and not have an adverse impact on the character of the area and neighbouring amenity. Um, the planning service goes on to say that at 4.2 metres high, almost the garage is 1.6 above the dwelling house eaves height, so it is deemed to be out of scale, that it covers um, almost um, the whole of the boundary with number 115, 
and the height is overbearing and will result in overshadowing. It impacts on the quality of outdoor space for the enjoyment of neighbours and that the garage is visible from the public road at the rear of the site. Um, so the reason for refusal states that the proposal is not appropriately sited, designed and scaled and would adversely affect the amenity of neighbouring residents. It therefore fails to comply with the relevant development plan policies that are listed on slide 21. The applicant in their supporting statement highlights that the proposed alteration of garage does not add does not adversely affect the amenity of neighbours, that no objections were received from surrounding neighbours um, and the proposed finish will be rough cast to match the house and the neighbouring properties. Um, so in conclusion, the key planning issues in this case are whether the design and the scale of the garage as proposed is acceptable and consideration of any impact on neighbouring amenity Members should note that the retrospective nature of the development should not influence any decision whether to uphold or to dismiss the review. It needs to be judged fully uh, on its merits. So that goes without saying probably, but thank you, Chair. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Strachan. Do members have any questions for the planning and or the legal advisor, please? I don't. Oh, okay. Councillor Goodall, please. Yeah, the comment from uh, 121, um, they mentioned overshadowing. Did, is that the case? Is there a case for overshadowing at 121? Mr. Trucker? Yes, apologies. Thank you, Councillor Goodall. So, um, so number 121, if you can see this slide here, is the detached property at the, uh, on, on this corner plot here. Um, so if you sort of follow the, the, the sun path rising in the east, coming around to the south, and then sort of coming around this way, um, there is limited potential, I would say, of, of overshadowing with that separation distance. Um, I think that there might be, it might sit a slightly lower level. Um, so there may be some additional overshadowing at certain times of the year, but generally speaking, um, I think you know when people are, are using that garden in summer months and things like that, it's it's probably not going to be a significant um, issue for number one two one. Um, although we we have no sun path analysis or anything like that, that to demonstrate that, but that would just be my uh, sort of view, looking at the sort of orientation and the the character of the the neighbourhood. Thank you. Can I ask a supplementary? Well, an, another question. Um, yes. Did the applicant uh, actually give an, an idea as to why they require such a height of a building? No, we don't have any information as as to why why they're looking for this the scale of building. Um, you know the the garage door is is fairly conventional. You know sometimes we see very very high garage doors to accommodate motorhomes or or boats or or that sort of thing. Um, but it's um, it's not an excessively high garage door, and there's no room for accommodation or anything to be formed above it. Um, so I, I'm I'm not entirely sure. I mean it's not always relevant, obviously, why they want why they want the proposed development. But I haven't seen anything that articulates that in any of the supporting information. No. I just thought there may be a, some form of business use or uh, access to repairing vehicles for gantries <laughs> and things like that, uh, which uh, may improve their application. Thanks. Possible storage. Yep. OK. Councillor Simpson, do you have any question for Mr. Strachan and or Mr. Decandia? No, I have nothing, nothing to add at this point. OK, thank you. Thank you. Uh, in which case, uh, I have some questions uh, for Mr. Strachan. On slide seven, uh, I think there is, or there could be a discrepancy. Hold on, I'm taking the slide seven on my, uh, uh, on my, no, no, uh, no, the slide six, six, sorry. <coughs> you say, 4.17 meter along the boundary, but you are talking about height. 
Am I correct here? Yes, the, these these are all heights. Yeah. Um, so it's four point one seven um, to to the ridge height, the the, the height here of the the mono pitch roof. Mm. Okay. All right. <clears throat> So basically, uh, on that slide, it says that, or it shows that the, the garage height is roughly twice the neighbor's garage height. That's just the. Uh, that, that's uh, the neighbor's garage there, yes. This is indicated by this dotted line. Yeah. Uh, another technical question Should we be minded to dismiss this uh, review? What? would be the consequences? Um, well, I did check that there is a, uh, there, there was a, an investigation by the, the planning enforcement team, which presumably is what resulted in this planning application being lodged. Should the planning permission be refused, then it, yes. it would be passed back to the enforcement team and, you know, there, you know, the applicant may apply again. They may um, challenge any sort of enforcement uh, case that, that that arises, but um, they, they would have to do something to formalise the, the use of the garage, whether that's to reduce its height or, or seek to, like I say, challenge it through the, the enforcement process or submit another planning application. They have options, but um, um, we, we don't know how obviously any of those would pan out. Okay, now technically speaking as well, if they were to, uh, to uh, in uh, if we were minded to dismiss the review, they would have therefore either to destroy uh, the existing uh, uh, garage or submit another application which would have to be significantly different from this one. Otherwise, it wouldn't stand. Am I right? It wouldn't be accepted. Am I right in uh, in saying that? I think Mr. Candy wants to comment on this, perhaps. Yes, please. Mr. Um, Candy. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, so it was just um, probably to steer you away from that train of thought at this time, really. Um, what, what you need to do is you need to take into account relevant considerations um, at this time yeah, uh, yeah. rather than that. So uh, um, the retrospective okay. aspect of it, it, try and put that to one side and try and look at it in terms of um, the planning considerations relative to the application before you and try and put out the fact that it, out of your mind the fact that it's retrospective. Thanks. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, I, uh, I take note of that. <clears throat> I don't have no, um, no other question. Uh, oh, OK, Councillor Goodall, please. If we were of you to accept this uh, proposal, um, can we put conditions um, visa remove, uh, reducing the roof height? Or would, we just, or would we just say, well, refuse it and allow them to apply again? Mr. Strachan, oh, Ms. De Candia. Thank you, Chair. Yes. Um, it, it, it maybe is something that that Mr. Strachan wants to come on to come in on. I I I don't wish to preempt um, his comments, but um, it, it is the application that is before you. Um, I think that would probably be a material variation to the application that that would require. A new application, but as I say, I don't want to preempt Mr. Strachan. He may be able to comment on that. Thank you, Mr. Strachan. Yeah, I think I think I would agree. The fundamental issue is the height of the garage and, and its acceptability. I don't think yeah. upholding it and asking them to remove the height, reduce the height, would would be a, a particularly good outcome. Yeah. Uh, if I may add, yeah, we can put conditions, but uh, on on. Uh, what is presented to us not to uh, change it significantly. Am I right? Yes, yeah, so conditions about about the materials or yeah, limiting right, use or, or, or that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. 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 Okay, thank you very much. I don't see any other in, uh, indication for questions. So do members have sufficient information to determine the review or do you require additional information and or a site visit? as was uh, noted at the onset of the presentation by uh, Mr. Strachan. 
have right. sufficient information. Okay, thank you, Councillor Simpson. I also have sufficient information and do not require a site visit. You're muted, Dominic. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Simpson. <coughs> right, uh, I uh, also agree. Uh, I uh, consider I have enough uh, information and I do not request or require a site visit, in which case I will now open the debate and discussion. Please indicate using the hands up signal. Councillor Simpson, please. <clears throat> I, I can't see any justification for the, this large increase in height of the garage. Um, and it just seems so out of, out of, out of um, context with the surrounding area. Mm -hmm. um, that it, it just doesn't, doesn't, um, I, I just can't understand why they've done it. Okay, uh, Councillor Goodall, please. <clears throat> I concur with Councillor Simpson, and um, uh, I don't see any uh, overshadowing, so we can't refuse it on those grounds. But it is out of scale, and the, uh, it's well over the eaves, uh, out of proportion. Um, so I think we should reject this application. Is this a motion? Yes, if you may, if you decide so, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and you seek a seconder? Yes, I seek a seconder. <laughs> Councillor Simpson? I, I will second Councillor Goodall. Okay, all right. Well, uh, Ms. De Candia, please. Thank you, Chair. So can I just clarify that in terms of the motion, the reasons for the motion for dismissing the notice of review, um, I'm just it's just with having regard to the, the reason for refusal on the decision notice, which referred to um, adversely affecting the amenity of neighbouring residents. I know that um, Councillor Goodall was saying that he didn't think there was um, an impact in terms of overshadowing, but he did think that the design and scale mm -hmm. um, was a uh, was uh, out it was out of scale and out of proportion. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so it, it was just to 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 clarify that 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 is that is the reasons for the motion that it's the the scale and proportion of the um, development proposal, it's it's not the um, the overshadowing aspect of of the uh, of the proposal. Thank you. Sorry, yes, good. sorry. Yeah, on you go. Yes, that's quite correct. I I, I uphold the um, the reasons for refusal, in particular LDP twenty twenty three policy P three and MPF four policy sixteen quality homes. Um, the the uh, construction is out of scale and is not character with the surrounding buildings. Okay. So the motion is competent. I do not see any uh, proposal uh, of an amendment. So uh, this is therefore unanimous. <clears throat> Can you please summarize, uh, Mrs. McLeod? Yes, Chair. So for LRB 611, planning application APP slash 2023 slash 2177, application for full planning permission for alterations and extension to garage, open brackets, respective, close brackets, at 117 Nest Circle, Ellen, AB419BU, the local review body has agreed to dismiss the notice of review and to uphold the appointed officer's decision to mm -hmm. refuse full planning permission for the reasons contained in the decision notice dated 18th March 2024, um, specifically in relation to um, the 
uh, it adversely affecting, um, uh, beg your pardon, based on the design and scale of the development um, being out of proportion. Yeah, thank you very much. Item 6, RRB 612, notice a review against refusal of full planning permission for erection of dwelling house at Blythewood 25 High Street, Kemney, Inverurie, AB 515NB, reference APP slash 2023 slash 2350. Committee, the planning advising officer for this item is Miss Murray Higgins, who will present this report. Mrs. McLeod. Before Ms. Higgins proceeds and for the minute of the item, can you please remind us whose members will take part in this case? Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, uh, if we could just ask um, for one moment for Councillor oh, yes. Yes, Davidson, for Councillor Davidson to, join us. Uh, to rejoin. Uh, I to think join, she's sorry. Just, uh, <laughs> yeah. She's just about to join us. If you could yeah. ask one moment. Yeah. Okay. In which case, yeah, I will. Uh, <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning, Councillor Davidson. Thank you for joining us. Uh, first of all, I have to go through uh, presenting to you. This committee is required to agree to give due regard to its duties under the Equality Act. Members should therefore acknowledge the public sector equality duty when considering each of the reviews before them today. Do you agree with that statement? Yes, I do. Thank you. Uh, so that's about it, right? And I've no uh, declarations of interest. Yeah, that's right. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you for keeping me right. <laughs> Thank you uh, for information. I have declared an interest in uh, 613, LRB 613, so I will leave the meeting at that point. Mrs. McLeod, can, you, can we uh, keep on, please? And thank you. And if I can just confirm um, for the recording that Councillor Davidson, um, you didn't join for the first item, LRB 611, um, as that was within your ward. Um, okay. And therefore, had you been in attendance at the beginning of the meeting, you would have declared an interest for that item. I left, yes. Yes, thank you. So thank you. for uh, LRB 612, um, the members in attendance for this review will be councillors Launche, Davidson, Goodhall and Simpson. Thank you. Thank you. Miss Higgins, can you now please present the notice of review and the slides, please? Yes, thank you, Chair. Hopefully you can see my presentation and the laser pointer coming up. Yes. Perfect. So this review is against refusal of full planning permission for the erection of a dwelling house at land at Blythewood, 25 High Street, Kemney. This application site is shown in red on the slide. As you can see, it is garden ground to 25 High Street to the immediate south of the site. And there are neighbouring properties within close proximity to the site. So this is the site as shown here. This slide shows the refused site plan, the house footprint and surrounding garden ground. The site would be accessed to and from Church Lane, which is here, which leads on to Paradise Road. Paradise Road is a one-way street from its junction at High Street here, which leads up to the north to Kendall Road. This is a further um, plan, floor plan for the application. Elevation plans. This plan shows amenities highlighted by the agent in relation to local living and the 20 minute neighborhood. The site is shown here and then the amenities are numbered round about. This aerial view is from Google Maps. This shows the site and surrounding area. A lot of the planting here in the rear garden has been removed as shown in the following site visit images, which were taken by the planning officer. So this image is the site visit image from the planning officer. This shows the development site looking towards Church Lane along here. 
and this is the development site looking towards Blythewood. So the site is garden ground of Blythewood and here is Church Lane. This is a Google Maps image from October 2021 um, of the existing rear access and it, from Church Lane into 25 High Street. Most of this planting, as I noted before, um, has been removed along with lots of the boundary wall. This is an image of the junction from Church Lane onto Paradise Road where the visibility display issue is noted. This is of the junction again between Church Lane and Paradise Road, looking to the north, which leads on to Kendall Road up here. This is of the junction again between Church Lane and Paradise Road, looking to the south this time, where traffic would approach from High Street due to the one-way system in place here. And this is an image of Church Lane progressing onto the footpath here which stops traffic continuing on along Church Lane. In terms of planning history at the site, an application for the same proposal was approved by the Geary Area Committee in February 2015. A renewal of planning permission application was approved in June 2018 for this proposal, which expired in March 2023, with no lawful start being made. It was during this time that the property was sold to the current owner. A new application was then submitted last year for a dwelling house at this site, which was refused in October 2023, with the reason being that the proposed dwelling, sorry, the proposed development by reason of the site constraints and access arrangements fails to meet the required visibility displays, posing a safety risk to road users and thereby fails to meet the requirements of policy RD1 and policy 18. This application was not subject to a review by the local review body. Support and information consists of a supporting planning statement, a total of seven valid representations, one for support and six objections were received. The letters raised the material issues shown on the slide, traffic congestion, pedestrian and vehicle safety, insufficient visibility displays and car parking were issues raised. The matters relating to design, layout, overdevelopment, amenity impacts and tree loss were also addressed in the report of handling. In terms of consultee responses, no objections to the proposal were received from developer obligations, environmental health, waste management and Scottish water. The key response relevant to this review is Roads Development, who state that their response remains unchanged from the previous application where they objected to the pr proposal. This is due to the inadequate visibility displays onto Paradise Road from Church Lane. The development cannot achieve the required visibility displays of 2 metres by 25 metres for the 20 mile an hour road, which would result in a highway safety issue. Therefore, the Roads Development Service object to the proposal. Within the Planning Service Report of Handling, it was acknowledged that the principle of development can be established at the site as infill development. In relation to local living and the 20 minute neighbourhood, the proposal was found to be suitably sited and for access to local amenities. Layout siting and design of the proposed development was found to be acceptable and the proposal was considered to result in no significant immunity impacts to others. The report went on to discuss servicing where water connections were found acceptable. However, it went on to raise concerns over road safety due to the inad inadequate visibility displays, where it has been noted that the appropriate visibility displays cannot be achieved from Church Lane onto Paradise Road. The report does note that while the supporting statement submitted by the agent aims to address this concern. The main issue for visibility relates to existing permanent structures at the entrance to Church Lane. Whilst the vis visibility displays to the north can be reduced slightly to 2 metres by 15 metres, the visibility displays to the south are still needed to be implemented in full. As such, the supporting statement from the agent does present a number of 
material considerations, there is, these are not considered to be of sufficient weight for the planning service to recommend approval of the proposal contrary to the recommendation of roads development. There is a single reason for refusal, which is that the proposed development would, by reason of the site constraints and access arrangements, fail to meet the required visibility displays, posing a safety risk to road users and thereby fails to meet the requirements of policy RD1 of the Local Development Plan and policy 18 of National Planning Framework 4. The applicant's appeal supporting statement makes reference to eight reasons of appeal. The planning history of two approvals for houses on the site, which the agent notes is material and to refuse the application is inconsistent and unreasonable. The development would not result in an increase in usage of Church Lane as access to Blythewood can already be taken from Church Lane. Policy RD1 and Policy 18 make no specific reference to road safety and therefore there should these should not have been used in refusing the application. The proposal has not been afforded sufficient weight under MPF4 Policy 15 Local Living and 20 Minute Neighbourhoods. No detrimental precedent would be created in approving a dwelling house as a precedent has already been set in granting the two previous applications. The proposal is compliant with all other policies as there is no other reasons for refusal. Notwithstanding the objections from the immediate neighbours, there is local support and there was no objection from Kemney Community Council. And the last reason was the applicant invested heavily in the renovation and extension of the existing property at Blythewood. The proposed dwelling would allow for the applicant to relocate into a smaller dwelling house in their retirement and would still be able to access the services of Kemney. In terms of third party response to this review, eight representations were received, seven from members of the public and one from the Waste Management consultee. The representations from the public largely reiterated previous points raised, including road safety concerns, noting that dismissal of the view of roads development would be negligent in protecting existing residents. It was also noted that traffic le levels have increased since the previous approvals. It was reiterated that neighbours consistently raised road safety concerns throughout all previous planning applications. In terms of new points raised as a result of the review, this includes no vehicle access to the rear of the site was possible until recently when the site was cleared due to existing planting, greenhouse and outbuildings. There's been an increase in congestion on Church Lane due to the extension and garage works at Blythewood, which highlight the increase which would come if a dwelling is to be built. In relation to local living and the 20 minute neighbourhood, it was noted in these representations that the Kemney facilities highlighted by the agent are accessible on foot from all properties in Kemney. Therefore, it is not necessary to add an additional dwelling house at the site to benefit from Kemney facilities. The applicant choosing to live in the new dwelling is not relevant and there is no legal obligation for the applicant not to sell the property. And the recent investment into Blythewood is not relevant in this case. They also noted that there is no evidence of local support as suggested by the agent. There was actually one representation of support to this review and this noted that the applicant, uh, should they have been mindful of the expiration time, development at the site would have already commenced. Moving on to the consultee comment, waste management raised no objection and commented again on bin capacity to be considered. The agent responded to these comments noting that regardless of the various matters raised by representees, there's only one reason of refusal which is related to road access and visibility. There's no other planning concerns about the development. They pointed out that development could have already commenced at the site. They note that the boundary wall to Church Lane has already been partially demolished due to subsidence as a result of a new water main being installed. 
and they also note that all properties on Church Lane have been altered and extended, which in turn will have added to additional wear and tear to Church Lane. So in conclusion, the key planning issue in this case relates to inadequate visibility displays. While the principle of development can be accepted, there is considered to be a road safety concern as highlighted by the Council's Road Development Service, who note that the visibility displays from Church Lane onto Paradise Road are insufficient. The applicant believes that planning history for the site is a material planning consideration, which should outweigh the revised stance of the Road Development Service since the previous approvals. And that's all I have. Chair, I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Higgins. Committee, do you have any uh, question for the legal or um, officer or the planning officer? Councillor Goodall, please. <clears throat> oh, um, <laughs> the visibility displays, and the mention that the part of a wall has fallen down or is coming down, has been taken down, has that aided in the visibility display situation or is it nothing? I'll just go back to a site plan and I will show what we're talking about here. So on this plan, so the the wall which has been taken down is onto Church Lane. So that obviously aids in the, the views going out onto Church Lane, but actually because Church Lane is considered to be a private road by our roads development service, the visibility displays in question are actually mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. going out from Church Lane onto Paradise Road. Paradise. So the applicant obviously does not own these these dwellings here. And I'll, I'll head back to mm -hmm. some photographs. Um, so these are the visibility mm. issues here, this side and this side. The road officer did note that currently there isn't actually any visibility displays because it, the visibility displays need to come back two metres within the site. So obviously two metres, sorry, two metres within within the, along Church Lane. So yeah. from this point, you wouldn't see north or south. So that it's the issue going on to Paradise Road rather than onto Church Lane. Thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah, that, that makes it clearer. Um, and it is, as you say, it looks like it has, uh, the, the road hasn't been adopted by us, so it's that's not an issue either. Um, by the look of those two cars on the screen at the moment and further cars back, I've got, I know this area a wee bit, but not a lot. I'm not that, that familiar with it. But I would say there's quite a few properties who use Church Lane as an access at the moment. Is that true? Yeah. Um... I'll go back to the to the site. So it looks like the these two properties do have access, I believe, from Paradise Road, but these several of these do only have access from Church Lane. So this would be would be the same in this case. Um, the applicant points out that while their access into Blythewood does come from High Street, they did have an access into the rear of the site anyway, which they could have used, but um, the third party representations note that this probably wasn't used. But that's obviously not um, not for us to think because the, the Roads Development Service have said that they, they do think of these sorts of development as new development. So while it's onto an existing road here, it does need to meet with current standards onto onto Paradise Road here. But you're correct, Jess, these, these properties do just use Church Lane solely as their own access. Thank you. Thank you. Any other question for uh, the planning officer or the legal advisor? I do not see any uh, indication. So do members have enough information and or do you require a site visit? I have enough information. I don't require a site visit. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody uh, else minded? I, I also have enough information and do not okay, require a site you. visit. Good. Yes, I'm happy with the information I've received. I believe that's enough. All right. Thank you. In which case, I'll open um, the debate.
Councillor Goodall, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, as, as we can see from the evidence before, as it's simply the uh, entrance to from uh, Church Lane to Paradise Road. Okay. And to be honest, what goes through my head as a common sense approach is if all these other houses have access the same way, um, I'm swithering as to whether we should accept this application because one more car isn't going to make much difference and we have no data. If we had data that said, yeah, uh, this is very busy by X amount or whatever, um, or there was an increase in footfall that would affect safety, I would perhaps consider that. But as it stands, I'm not sure. Well, I'm sure. I'm, I'm pretty, I'm, my mind is forming to support this uh, application now. Thank you. OK, thank you. Any other comments? Right. I, uh, Missy Gaines. Uh, just to put my mind at rest, is it possible to see the other end of Church Lane, not the end uh, on Two Paradise Road, but the other, the other end? Yes, so I do have a, a slide here. It actually goes on to a footpath, so you, it, you wouldn't be able to drive right through Church Lane. Ah, right. So, so they would simply come in, go to their driveways, and they would need to come back out as this is a footpath. Yeah, so basically the other end of Church Lane couldn't be used to access uh, another road. All right, yeah, correct. thank you. Yeah, 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 thank you. Um, Councillor Davidson, please. <clears throat> I was waiting to see where you were going with that to see if you had what? come it, to. I, I, but I can answer that, I, but uh, I, keep, please keep on. Um, I, I do think this is really difficult because although um, the entrance was clearly unused that to the house that's existed to Blythewood was clearly unused, it does exist. So the president president is there for uh, access to the back of Blythe's Wood. So I'm inclined to agree with Councillor Goodall. Not, I'm not sure that he's made a motion yet, but I am inclined to agree that it is an existing access that could be used, and mm -hmm. therefore there's not any more access being provided than what is already there. So mm -hmm. I am inclined to agree that this is acceptable. And I want to see if Councillor Goodall wants to turn his comments into a motion or not. Councillor Goodall, or do you want me to uh, uh, comment on uh, Councillor Davidson? <laughs> well, just waiting to see basically uh, if anyone else had any other comments that would uh, sway me another, in another direction. Um, Councillor Davidson, what I was thinking is that if the other end of Church Lane would be a better uh, access onto a, a, a no, a, another road, then uh, obviously this would be a, a possible solution by making Church Lane a one way, since since it's um, it's private anyway. So uh, it could it could be done, but it's not obviously not the case. Do you see my point here? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, thank you. Right. Councillor Goodall. Uh... Um, I propose a motion that we uphold this review. Um, uh, basically, that uh, RD1 policy 18 of the MPF4 does not apply in this situation uh, because the, the the exits and entrances are already being used and, and, and are in existence. OK. And you seek a seconder? Yes, that would be useful. Uh, Ms. De Candia, please. Thank you, Chair. It was just to come back um, with uh, with regard to the motion from Councillor Goodall. Policy. Uh, apologies, Councillor Goodall, for a second time. Um, uh, so I, what I'm hearing is that I think what you're saying is that um, you think the development proposal is an acceptable departure from the development plan on the reasons that you've stated there because uh, with reference to um, 
I think it was at the existing exits from the 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 uh, from Blythewood. I think if that's what you were saying, but it's an acceptable departure on that basis. Have I got that right? Thank you. Yes, and thank you for keeping me right because I always make a muck of this this, this stage. Thank you. All right, Councillor Davidson, please. Yes, I'm, I'll second Councillor Grewell um, for, for that reason, that um, I believe that are, there already is an exit on Church Lane, so we're not actually adding any more access than exists already. And and I do appreciate that the junction's not great, but the refuse vehicle seems to use it as well, so it's obviously manageable, and, and I'm not aware of a particular accident history, so I'm sure people are very cautious. It's not ideal, but I do think that this is acceptable. OK, thank you. Is there anybody else minded? Councillor Simpson. I just want to say I agree with my two colleagues. Thank you. Yeah, well, uh, so do I, because basically, uh, as Councillor Goodall has pointed out, a lot of other people are using the church lane and that access onto Paradise uh, Road. So it's it's a fait accompli. It's, uh, as Councillor Davidson said, we are not introducing anything new here. OK, thank you very much. So uh, basically, it would be unan uh, unanimous decision. Mrs. McLeod, can you uh, summarize, please? <clears throat> yes, Chair, thank you. For LRB 612, application APP slash 2023 slash 2350, application for full planning permission for the erection of dwelling house at Blythewood 25 High Street, Kemney, Inverurie, AB 515NB, NB, the local review body has agreed to uphold the notice of review and reverse the appointed officer's decision and grant full planning permission on the grounds that the development proposal is an acceptable departure from the uh, local development plan on the basis um, of the existing entrance and exits from the property of Blythewood onto Church Lane um, already being in existence um, and, and would be acceptable. Thank you. Now, uh, item seven, LRB, LRB 613, notice of review against refusal of planning permission in principle for erection of dwelling house at land adjacent to Abuclean, Black Chambers, West Hill, AB 327BU, reference APP slash 2023 slash 1464. Since I... Uh, expressed an interest, I will leave you in the capable hands of our vice chair. See you soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I take it, Mrs. DeCander, that I don't have to restate what uh, Dominic has just said, even though I've changed chair. Just that's that's fine, uh, Councillor Goodall. Just to check that you have a copy of uh, the notes there for assistance. If not, yes. we can take a short adjournment for you to. No, I have them in front of me. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Right, thank you. Um, Mr. Strachan, could I ask you to present the notice of review and PowerPoint slides, please? Yes, thank you. Uh, this review is against the refusal of an application for planning permission and principle for the erection of a dwelling house at Black Chambers near West Hill. This slide shows the location plan uh, at the top, uh, the land solely owned by the applicant uh, in blue uh, and his business, uh, which is at the bottom uh, right. The site plan, uh, proposed site plan is on the left of the screen. Uh, the supporting information refers in some detail to the applicant's business and uh, an existing dwelling house. So this slide that I've uh, put on the screen plots the application site um, up here at position one, uh, the business Aberclean at position two, 
and the location of the applicant's existing dwelling house, which is about two kilometres or one and a half miles away at position three there. Uh, slide four shows an aerial view of the position of the proposed dwelling house, uh, obviously by, indicated by the arrow, and then uh, the existing business, uh, which is located approximately 320 metres to the southeast. Uh, the house would be located in close proximity to this agricultural shed and would sit to the right hand side of this image. Uh, slide six is a closer view of the site and the shed from private access track. Looking back towards the public road, the application site is on the left uh, side here uh, and some of the buildings associated with the business can just be made out uh, on the left hand side where my laser pointer is. <clears throat> From the access track looking directly east, the proposed dwelling house would be located uh, in this field. <clears throat> Supporting information submitted with the application uh, included a design and access statement, an overview uh, uh, of the business plan for the business, cash flow projections, um, and a drainage report. Uh, a single representation in support of the application was received. This stated that they saw no downside to building a house in this location, and that was from the perspective of a close neighbour. Uh, a range of consultation responses were received, as outlined on this slide. None objected or expressed any concerns, although some conditions would be required if the review was upheld. Uh, so within the report of handling, the planning service state that the application site is within the accessible rural area. Uh, and is, as I say, approximately 320 metres from the plant hire business location, that the applicant lives approximately one and a half miles away in a house with an existing agricultural occupancy condition, that the proposed dwelling house fails to meet most of the development plan policy criteria, Looking specifically um, at the, the case for an essential worker, the business is not a primary industry. Um, whilst the business is viable, it's not considered that there is an on -site, that an on-site presence is needed uh, for its efficient operation. Looking at the applicant's existing dwelling house uh, and the agricultural occupancy condition that is on that, uh, the planning service says, you know, under the current sort of uh, thinking and following the chief planner's letter from a number of years ago, um, that, that that condition could easily be removed from that dwelling house um, so that there is no breach there. Uh, technical issues uh, are OK and no developer contributions are required. Uh, so the planning service promoted a single reason for refusal based on non-compliance um, with policy 17 of NPF 4 and R1 and R2 of the Aberdeenshire Local Development Plan. Um, I would say uh, and agree with the uh, agent that the reason for refusal is not terribly well structured. Um, it outlines that the proposed dwelling uh, fails to meet any of the criteria in these policies. The applicant in their supporting statement highlights that the proposal in their view complies with NPF uh, policy 17 as there is an essential need and a viable rural business involved, that insufficient consideration has been given to the justification by the applicant, that inadequate consideration has been given to general support in policies and strategies for rural development, that the proposal is compliant with all other policies, there are no objections from third parties or consultees, uh, and finally, they say that the reason for refusal is poor as it doesn't state why um, the proposal does not comply with development plan policies. Um, in conclusion, the key planning issue in this case really is whether a dwelling house associated with the business is justified. The applicant currently lives in the vicinity of the business, but in a house with a agricultural occupancy condition um, and then there is a consistency between NPF 4 and the Aberdeenshire Local Development Plan, and the applicant considers that the requirements of NPF 4 are met due to the nature of the business. Um, finally, members, are there any other uh, material considerations? And just at the end of the PowerPoint, I have um, the two relevant bits of policy if uh, members wanted to, to have a look at, at those in some more detail. 
Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, do any do members have any questions for the planning advisor or legal advisor? Now, before I, I uh, I'm not sure that what position we should uh, be looking at the note I have for chair. Uh, what we have to be aware, committee, is that there is a, a note that I have which states that part of the information that has been given to us is of a confidential nature. So if we stray into that, can Mrs DeCandia please uh, indicate to me if we are straying from what we should be talking about uh, and take some parts of our discussion in private if necessary. So going back, do members have any questions for the planning advisor or legal advisor? No questions at all. Okay. Do members have sufficient inf information to determine the review or do you require additional information and or a site visit? I have enough information, thank you. Thank I you. I was beginning to wonder my speaker was broken. Yeah. <laughs> I also have enough information. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Simpson. Um, if no further information is required, we shall proceed to discussion. So who wants to start the discussion? No discussion. OK. Oh, Isabel. Thank you. Yes, thanks very much. Um, I just would tend to agree with the planner and the reasons for refusal. I mean, perhaps it wasn't put very well in the report uh, of handling. However, I would tend to agree that this is an inappropriate location and um, w without enough justification. And it, it's not close enough to the business. I do it, you know, it's close a shed that I'm not quite sure what that shed's in use for, but I, I would just tend to agree um, with the decision that's been made. Thank you. Um, do, would you like to put forward a motion? Sure, yes. I'm happy to make a motion that um, we agree with the refusal of permission for this site. And um, agree with the recommendations of the planner. Thank you. Do we have a seconder? Councillor Simpson? Yes, I, I will second that. Uh, the, proper, the proposed property doesn't seem to be close enough to the, build, to the business to be um, considered as essential. Thank you. Bruce, you would like to say something? Yes, th thank you, Chair. If, if members uh, will let me back in, it was just to say that in the supporting information, the uh, applicant has uh, given some uh, justification and rationale for the, the, the location here. Uh, and it's partly to do with this overhead pylon, which runs uh, sort of northwest to southeast. And apparently there is a high voltage cable somewhere and I don't know if it's actually indicated on the plans that runs in a sort of north south direction so um, part of their justification for not locate co-locating it immediately uh, adjacent to uh, the property is these sort of utilities constraints so hopefully that that helps at least put forward their their rationale for why the house is located where it is and it's on blue land rather than family owned land which is the the yellow land that wraps around to the south and, and the west so hope that's helpful Thank you, Mr. Strachan. Um, with bearing that in mind, Councillor uh, Davidson, do you have any further comments? No, well, yes, I, I absolutely understand the reason for the selection of the location, but there's not enough. Inf there's not enough information about um, the justification of needing a proper needing uh, to live close to the um, 
business and it says in the supporting information that none of the other staff live anywhere near the business so you know if they're one of their main um work uh, um, one of the main things they do is road maintenance i suppose they get contracts from um road authorities um, and snow clearing of things then having one member of staff living beside the business doesn't really seem to be adequate and will make little difference to their capacity to do the work. So, you know, I think there are other options and I I don't see the need. I don't, I can't see that they've proven that it's an essential worker's house. Thank you. So your motion stands, I take it? Yes, my motion stands. And uh, just to double check, Councillor Simpson, you still uh, second the motion? I do, yes. Uh, I have nothing further to add now. No intention of putting forward an amendment. So if we could, Mrs. DeCandia, could you uh, take us forward, please? Um, thank you, Chair. I, 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 I didn't have my hand up, and it's possibly I would. Uh, let Mrs. McLeod come in at this point. Typically, it, it was just to check if um, Councillor Davidson wanted any further assistance regarding reasons for refusal from possibly from Mr. Strachan. But I do know that the motion was um, amended laterally um, with regard to uh, the essential worker um, ground not being. Um, that the views that it, it does that the view of Councillor Davison is that it it, it does that the, the proposed development uh, does not um, seem to meet the essential worker need. Um, but if if there's any any help that can be any further help that can be offered with regard to reasons uh, that Mr. Strach and me will we may be willing to offer, I, that was all I was going to simply say, Chair. No, Thank I was. You. I was really agreeing with the reasons refusal given. I only um, stated that one in particular because we were talking about the location of the property, the proposed property. But as I said, the reasons I agree with the reasons for refusal. That's the basis of my motion. Do you have anything to add, Mr. Strachan? Um, thank you. No, like I say, the, the, the... You know the 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 reason the reason does the job, but it, it's it's certainly not how I would structure a reason for refusal because it it, it doesn't specifically mention the, the specific elements of this case. But it's perfectly satisfactory, and if the LRB is is happy with it, then then I I don't propose that you you look at it again. Thank you. So basically, we should just see that it fails to comply with policy seventeen rural developments NPF four policy R one special rural rural areas and policy R2 development proposals elsewhere in the countryside of the ALDP 2023. Is that, would that take it be sufficient? Yes. Okay. Ah, right. Mrs. McLeod, could you sum up, please? Yes, thank you, Chair. So for LRB 613, planning application APP slash 2023 slash 1464, Application for planning permission in principle for the erection of dwelling house on land adjacent to Aberclean, Black Chambers, West Hill, AB327BU. The local review body has unanimously agreed to dismiss the notice of review and to uphold the appointed officer's decision to refuse planning permission in principle for the reasons contained in the decision notice dated 14th February 2024. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. McLeod. Um, that uh, ends this review. LRB 614 is next. Can we call back in the chair, please? Yes, we will.
tight. Well, hello everybody again. Should we keep on? Proceed, Reda? Uh, Chair, I've got my hand up. I was just wondering if we may take a, a short, uh, a very short adjournment. Thank you. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. It's 11.30, so uh, already had a coffee, so I'll have to have another one. But uh, we can have a 15-minute adjournment. Uh, Councillor Davidson, please. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I was just wondering, um, this isn't, uh, I wasn't here obviously at the start of the meeting, but this wasn't the um, next LRB that I was expecting to come up. Uh, so, I had a, a statement. Yeah, 615, I, I just read from my sheet, I forgot 614 isn't being heard, so we're now on LRB 615. Okay, yeah, no, that's fine. I just wondered why that was, but it's fine. Well, for 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 your uh, information, uh, I stated uh, at the centre that, that at this point I know I have to let the committee know that for technical reasons, case LRB six one four will not be heard today and will oh, be fine. deferred for a future meeting. All I right. I it was something like that. I just wanted to check. No, no, that's so, fine. Okay. Thank you. Well, see Thank you. you. See, you, in a see you all back at uh, a quarter to twelve. Perfect. Thank you.